This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today I'm gonna to talk about BYD Build Your Dreams. Yeah, so you know I tested the BYD Auto 3 lately quite extensively, but also in Thailand. Uh, but last time I tested it now, I had a car scanner. Yeah, I, by the way, I use car scanner for most of the cars, but then for Tesla, I use uh, something called uh, Scan My Tesla. So you can check it out if you're interested and you need to have a, an OBD dongle. Uh, but okay, so with car scanner, I was able to find out a lot about what uh, could possibly be going on uh, during driving and charging on the Auto 3. But also, I think those also, this also affects uh, Han and maybe uh, Tang. Uh, but uh, what I experienced when I did 1000 km challenge and some other trips is that uh, the battery overheats. Yeah, it overheats when charging. Uh, and I think it could be because maybe the cooling is not as powerful as it should be. And maybe the, the internal resistance is a little bit higher than some other batteries. Uh, so I have some ideas what uh, what uh, BYD can do to fix this. Yeah, only via software updates. We, we could possibly fix a lot of things, but instead of me writing an email to BYD in Norway, but preferably in English, this is what I've done. Um, yeah, I wrote an email to, to Toyota about uh, my experience, my findings when I tested Toyota. And uh, even, even the Toyota also had a slight replicate because it was doing things in not so optimal way. Uh, and yeah, so I emailed Toyota and then in English and then they forward it hopefully to the factory and maybe there will be an update soon or we'll see, you know, it's just my input. They will take a look at it and the engineers, of course, some of the stuff I request might not be possible. But so instead of me writing an email, I instead make, an e uh, make a video and we can also have a little healthy discussion about what's going on here and there was a good idea is it possible you know and you you guys will also get some insight in uh, maybe what was the problem with the auto 3. so um what i found out is that um, the auto 3 the battery actually charges at maximum speed around 20 ish in the low 20. i'm not sure exactly how much but in most other cars you know korean cars like kia hyundai I think also the MEB platform like uh, ID3, ID4, they usually require 25 degrees Celsius. Many cars, there is like a magic number, boom, 25 degrees Celsius, ooh, maximum charging speed. And then if the battery is colder than that, there's something I call cold gate, which is just a, just a slang, but it means that the battery is too cold to receive maximum speed. Uh, and then, but here in this battery, it seems like this battery, or the Auto 3 battery, likes to be cool. So that is uh, useful information for how maybe we should uh, treat the battery to avoid too much overheating. And I found out that it rapid gates, which means overheats. Uh, for charging, once it hits 46 degrees Celsius, it reduces the charging speed. So you wanna avoid that. And there are things you can do by accident uh, to, to, to trigger or to cause it to overheat even faster. I'll come back to that, uh, but um, what I also found out when I was driving the 1000 km challenge is that every time I finished charging and I started driving, the temperature would drop uh, roughly 10, 15 minutes after I started driving. The temperature dropped. This is very common across other cars also. The Korean cars, again, they will actually run the AC compressor for around 10, 15 minutes. I see that it pulls two, three, four kilowatt to cool down the battery. It might be at 45, uh, 50 degrees, right? During charging session and then it drops to 25, 30 degrees uh, to get ready for the next charging session. Um, but uh, what I noticed with the Auto 3 is that once the state of charge drops below 20 degrees, uh, sorry, 20 percent, then the temperature start rising. So the typical scenario is that you charge up to I don't know 60, 70 percent, and the battery is hot, and then you start driving, and after 15, 20 minutes, the battery cools down, but then it stops cooling further it there seems to be a threshold i've seen it to be roughly 35 degrees uh, 34 35 degrees celsius in the outer three then it just stops the active cooling i'm not sure what it does then maybe it just runs some stuff via the radiator but without any ac cooling or i'm not sure how that works but the temperature at least stays stable it can stay at 34 35 degrees celsius even when we are hammering at uh, 120 kilometers per hour right uh, but then towards the end, below 20%, then suddenly the temperature start rising again. And why is that? Uh, two reasons. 
uh, we have internal resistance in the battery. Uh, this is something I was told. I'm not sure you guys can confirm, but the internal resistance in the battery uh, varies depending on state of charge. And uh, someone told me that the lowest internal resistance is usually between 30 and 70 percent, which means that when the battery is low or the battery is very high, you have higher internal resistance. And that causes more heat buildup because when you are discharging, the internal resistance causes more heat. Uh, but also another thing is that as you go lower, uh, the voltage drops uh, slightly. And then to maintain the same power output, because we are then driving the same speed, right? Like we did, uh, then the, the current needs to increase to accommodate for to compensate for the the lower voltage so this is what i've seen again over and over again for example with um uh, leaf yeah when leaf goes low uh it also uh, the temperature also rises the current increases and also internal resistance increases so that's maybe why nissan purposely hid a bunch of percent like the the high 10 percent below zero as uh, ever since uh, the leaf 40 the 40 kilowatt hour leaf came out but okay, so this is my findings. And then what I suggest uh, BYD to change is that um, what they should do is to pre-cool the battery before arrival. Yeah, it sounds crazy because most cars like the Tesla I'm sitting in here or most other electric cars, they actually preheat the battery. But okay, I did this in summer. So I don't know how the car will perform in winter, but yeah, it sounds crazy. Because, but what I've seen was that, okay, so the battery stays at 20, no, at uh, 34 on the max temp. It's the max temp that matters now. They're usually the Min temp is fine, but the max temp stays at around uh, 35. No, no, yeah, 35. And then if you go deep, if you go below 20%, it, it can rise up to 39, almost 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, seems like uh, the car does not control actively this. It just kind of lets it slip. And that is the problem because when you start charging and you have 40 degrees in the max temp, it doesn't take too long before it overheats. But if it pre-cool, my suggestion is to pre-cool it so that the max temp is as low as around 25 or maybe, yeah, something like that, right? Uh, and that will make things a lot better because during the charging session, it will heat up slowly. But uh, by the time it overheats, then we already hit the threshold where it should throttle, which is around 60 five percent and then once it throttles then we have lower heat buildup um, and also another thing is that um, if we are if during winter if we are using uh, heat pump I mean it has heat pumps so if we are using heater uh, this is what I'm, I'm not sure but I'm guessing based on lots of testing right <laughs> I was about to say hundred hundreds of hours of testing and experience with many cars is that my guess is that if the heat pump is in a cooling mode uh, it will then only cool and I, I ask I, I don't know for sure but most cars they have only one AC unit uh, even the e Kia EV6 GT I tested I ask Kia they ask engineers uh, how many AC units do they have they have only one maybe Porsche Taycan has two AC units you know a high performance car should have two AC units right but so what does it mean it means that if you have only one AC unit that AC unit is then either cooling the cabin and or also cooling the battery and then this is what i've seen with the bmw i3 is that if you use the heat pump when you are charging meaning that you are heating up the cabin while you're charging the i3 battery will overheat i also have a video about it so uh, you know this is not just some random stuff i make up uh, this is based on like same pattern I see in many many different brands also the MEB cars like ID, ID3, ID4, Škoda Enyaq, uh, Q4, e-tron also the Korean cars EV6, Ionic 5 they also overheat if you run the AC or if you run the, the air conditioning while you're charging because it steals the AC so my like my suggestion is that if this car, if the Auto 3 has a, has a PTC heater, while you're charging in winter, if you run the heater, you for some reason want to sit in the car and eat burger, I don't know, can you, do, can you just run the PTC heater? It will be less efficient, but then the AC unit will then focus on cooling the battery rather than cooling the cabin, right? But then some people in the live stream claim that, the, um, that Auto 3 doesn't have PTC and that doesn't make any sense. Like most cars, most cars I know, they have PTC plus heat pump. 
for example, in the Leaf and in the I Ionic 5, it will run the PTC heater immediately when you've heated up the car, so you get heat instantly. And then as the, the pressure builds up in the heat pump system after several minutes, then the, the, the PTC kicks down and then the heat pump takes over. But then um, I remember the Fat e-tron, for example, in winter, man, if you just start the car and start driving, it is cold for what feels like five years, but it's usually three minutes before you get some heat because it seems like the e-tron wants to be stingy, which is kind of ironic, right? <laughs> uh, but then maybe the e-tron has not been pre-programmed to run the PTC heater initially. Uh, so, yeah, uh, okay. And then, okay, next one, next thing you could do is that um, um, when, when we are charging, you know, uh, we should start cooling right away. Because I, uh, this is another finding I have. I've seen this over and over in other three. When you start charging, the cooling does not start right away. It will wait until the, the, the max temp is at 39 degrees Celsius. Then you get a notification, the smart, uh, smart cool, whatever, smart temperature control. Right? So why wait until 35 degrees Celsius? Because like I said initially, this car likes to be cold. It can actually charge pretty fast even if it's cold. So don't wait for 39 degrees. Uh, cool. It depends, of course, if it's really cold in the battery. But I would say that at least past, start cooling at 30 degrees then. That would be way better. And also start cooling right away at maximum power because the car should, it should read the sensors better. It, it, if I feel like the Auto 3 system has been poorly programmed that it's just running on some basic code, basic code, no, but it's running on really not so intelligent, not so well thought code, and it doesn't do checks and stuff. Like, just look at the battery, I mean, look at the BMS, right? If you're receiving 85 kilowatt and the temperature rises quite quickly, ramp up the cooling, you know? <laughs> Otherwise, you will, you will have rapid gate soon, you know? I, um... And then the uh, next step was, uh, yeah, if um, if you, wait, wait, no, I already mentioned that one, okay. Um, but yeah, another thing, yeah, <laughs> which happen, tends to happen a lot with, uh, with the Auto 3 is that um, if the charging just happened to stop for some reason, or if you start the car, uh, many cars will also do this, same again, MAB cars will do this, uh, even the Kia will do this. When you, once you start the car and the, and the air conditioning starts, the AC unit will temporarily stop but with those cars, they will then ramp up to the maximum speed right away. But it, the, just that you have that 10, 20 second of downtime on the AC unit for some reason, right? I think Tesla doesn't do it, by the way. Yeah, but yeah, that's a different uh, thing. But, um, but what happens here is that if charging stops, then the cooling also stops. And, and then once it starts again, it starts at the lowest uh, speed. So. Uh, it should just keep the cooling running even if you stop charging for some reason and then you can because then what, what is good is that while you're struggling to plug it in and start again that that one two minutes is very valuable because then the battery gets time to cool down before you plug it in and then you avoid the rapid gate um, and also yeah another thing uh, i also mentioned maybe it wasn't clear but the way it has been programmed today is that um, at 39 degrees celsius it will start cooling but it cools at the lowest power, which is roughly around one kilowatt. The reason I know this is because uh, when I look at what comes from the charger versus what goes into the battery, there is one kilowatt loss. And then after a while, after several minutes, I will hear that the fans or something, it spins up a little bit. And then usually I see that it's around two kilowatt. And then at the maximum, typically after around five, 10 minutes, I haven't timed it exactly, then it seems to have the highest uh, possible cooling, which is around four kilowatt. But this was also weird because in the car with the, uh, no, the, car with the lead bar in the grill, that one, I kept hearing it, you know, the maximum uh, fan speed. But the other car I tested that didn't have lead bar, I never heard it go that high. And I suspect that maybe it was cooling at only two kilowatt. But that's also a bit weird, you know, if the car is capable of cooling at 4 kilowatt, why isn't it doing it? Maybe it was compensating on the car with the lead bar because it senses that, hey, the cooling is not uh, sufficient versus what it should be. Okay, ramp up more. But just, if you have 4 kilowatt, use those 4 kilowatts. That's my uh, idea. Um, and then another uh, idea I have is that... Um, if the if the battery is at 45 degrees Celsius, it means that it's gonna overheat soon. 
and then once it hits 46 it doesn't overheat right away it seems like maybe 46 is 45.5 i'm not sure but then usually around one minute after i see it tick up to 46 then boom then it goes from 85 kilowatt to around 50 kilowatt that's in the rapid gate state uh, but what happens then is that suddenly then the cooling is at the same rate but then the charging speed is lower and that actually allows the battery to cool down this also happens with other cars like you know like the korean siesta same thing there right you know, kia ev6 or something um but it usually takes a long time could be several minutes before it cools down the temperature again to 45 44 degrees before the speed boom goes up again right uh, but then you have this yo-yo going on like okay battery hot all right slow and then nope, oh battery cool yes 85 kilowatt yeah but then only for a minute and then oh no it's too hot again 46 degrees oh no slow down so but i noticed that the, there was one session where it didn't hit 85 kilowatt but i was getting around 70 kilowatt i'm not sure why but then at 70 kilowatt it seems to be the threshold or, or uh, that level that you don't have that high current and you don't have that high heat buildup so you can actually maintain 70 kilowatt and it seems like 70 kilowatt even speed is faster than 85 kilowatt for a little bit and then 50 kilowatt for a long time and then 85 again and 50 you know so in case it's really hot outside like in thailand or somewhere else spain uh, and the system the cooling system the hardware is not strong enough to cool it down well at least r lower it to 70 kilowatt then or 65 and that could be better because it's, it's almost as is if you are charged i mean sorry if you are driving fast right if you drive fast 200 kilometers per hour and then you drive slow 100 kilometers per hour you will have more losses versus if you drive at even speed 150 kilometers per hour you know um but yeah um also a lot one last thing that uh, I, I suggest uh, they do at byd is that after you start uh, after you stop charging the problem i had with the first 1000 kilometer challenge was that it was cold outside and i was getting some fogging problems so i ran the heater and stuff to get rid of the fog and it was cold yeah so then i stole the ac unit the heat pump and then the car couldn't cool down uh, i'm i'm guessing what happened was that i was stealing the ac and the car could only run like run the cooling via the radiator with like it was running an only fans for the battery that's my my guess so it could only cool down via the fan but not with with ac power uh or ac you know uh, air conditioning so then it cooled down slower and then maybe the car was pre-programmed to cool down for a certain time only and then stop cooling uh, and then you end up with a higher uh, temperature so that's also what i have what happened when i did those tests is that instead of the temperature dropping to 34 degrees it would drop to 39 degrees and those five degrees extra actually makes a big difference because um another thing i should mention is that um, um the the temperature span is quite narrow in the auto 3 uh, you will typically arrive at the char fast charger with 34 34 to 39 degrees but already at 46 it rapid gates so which means that you have roughly 10 of uh, yeah five to ten degrees celsius right where you can heat the battery before it replicates but in comparison ev6 which also has similar problem it also overheats after a while but ev6 will typically cool down the battery this was even the ev6 gt right thirstier car it will cool down the battery to, to uh, 27 to 30 something roughly 27 to 30 ish degrees celsius uh, before the fast charging but it doesn't overheat at 46 degrees it overheats at 52 degrees celsius so you have a way longer span there before it overheats plus that the internal resistance in the ev6 is freaking wonderful so even when it's pumping in 220 kilowatt it, it heats up but you know yeah it almost heats up at the same rate or similar rate as uh, the auto 3 heats up while charging at only 85 kilowatt not just to put things in perspective so but okay what was my point again yeah my point is that after you start driving if you want to run some heater afterwards those 10 15 minutes you want to cool down the battery right then run the ptc heater uh for the cabin and then run the ac unit for cooling on the battery and once the battery is cooled down to around 35 34 degrees celsius then switch over and then use heat pump 
uh, for heating the cabin and yeah, turn off PDC. So yeah, PDC is less efficient than heat pump, but in general, um, if it's, let's say 10 degrees outside or five degrees outside, PTC uh, for typical for cabin will suck around one to two kilowatt, whereas heat pump might suck half kilowatt or maybe, you know, it, yeah, may, heat pump might be uh, using only half of that energy. But since we are only talking about 10, 15 minutes, like you're wa wasting uh, maybe 500 watt hour or maybe less, I'm not sure. And that's just a drop in the ocean, really, versus how much you are uh, losing when you're charging slower. So 500 watt hour is good for roughly uh, three, two, three kilometers of range. So not that big of a deal. So yeah, um, these are just my suggestions uh, to BYD, how they can possibly improve this. You know, I, I think you can do a lot of things just with software update. Just look at Tesla. You know, back in the days, I, I remember in 2019 when I first received my Tesla Model 3 Performance MC Hammer. Uh, back then, uh, those Model 3s could only take 120 kilowatt at the supercharger. It was before they unlocked the, all the power, 200, 250 kilowatt. But when I took a trip to Lapalon, and it wasn't even that cold, but the Model 3 in 2019, it cold gated because um, that battery was more susceptible for, for cold gating than, for example, uh, Millennium Falcon's battery. Millennium Falcon or the, the bigger battery, the Model, Model S, uh, didn't really have problems with uh, cold gating. And it did actually, it, it, uh, the, the motor fed the battery with heat. So it had, it had heat scavenging. My, my 10 year old Tesla had heat scavenging. Excess heat from the motor was fed into the battery to keep it nice and warm. So when I arrived at the supercharger, I never had any problems, you know, I, I would see 118 kilowatt, you guys saw it, right, 10 years ago, uh, no problem, but my Tesla Model 3 did not get 120 kilowatt, and I was, I was wondering what the heck happened, I asked Tesla, they looked into the BMS and they said yeah, the battery was at 35 degrees Celsius or something, which is actually too cold, it should be around 45 degrees Celsius to receive the maximum seed, so this is prime example that back then, four years ago Tesla didn't have this alien technology but then eventually they implemented preheating of the battery which is to activate the, the front uh, the motors front rear motors to generate heat and then feed that into the battery so I believe that BYD if they just do if they look at my video consider it uh, they could actually make the car uh, they could make the car rapid gate or, or they can make the battery overheat less yeah, what do you guys think, huh? A very long video, but very deep explanation. And hopefully this will be useful. We'll see if the, there will be some <laughs> update coming out from BYD eventually with this. So yeah, and if BYD, if you guys watching, I mean, you, you make great cars. I mean, the BYDs, they are in general good. I'm just not a fan of the auto steer, <laughs> yeah? But in general, they, they have good value for money, especially in Thailand, especially, I guess, in Asia. And in some parts of Europe also, the BYD Auto 3 is actually good value for money. But some places, like in Norway, then it almost doesn't make any sense. But yeah, so I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.